an average human being works 9 to 5 a day, crunching a lot of miles on an eco-friendly scoot like this. Probably has some errands to run for his wife or a chocolate to get for his girlfriend. <sighs> well, when the day is finally over, he doesn't have time for himself. And this is when Sunday arrives. of an early morning sunrise right at the foothills of Nandi the tranquility that it provides can only be better complemented with the introduction of a bike as good as this the Z800 as far as the introduction of the Z800 goes it dates back to the early 1960s where the original Z1000 was introduced Kawasaki had meticulous plans because the Hondas Soichiro Honda especially the mastermind of Honda had something to offer for everyone. The UJM, that is the Universal Japanese Motorcycle Series that was meant to evolve into the standardized way of every inline four that the Japanese big four were meant to build. Honda bought Grand Prix technology all the way from America to the Japanese shores. But then, Japanese side had lots to offer. The Kawasaki's, especially Sojo Kawasaki, wanted the best for everyone and they were absolutely waiting for the moment the CB750 to arrive. Since the MV Augustas already have the 750S with the Duo HC setup that time, the Kawasaki's were the first to come with the disc brake setup and the 903cc in line 4. 48 years later, today we have the amazing Kawasaki G800. Naked bikes, street fighters are sweat. Sexy, aggressive, fast and oh so much fun in the city and back roads. Prime for wheelies and when hopping off any freeway or jumping off the line at the stoplight, nimble and perfect for splitting lanes during the times of congestion, delightful in the canyons on the track. For those days, you want to get a knee down. Kawasaki bikes enjoy a loyal fan following. Most owners won't even switch bikes easily and this for a really good reason. These motorcycles have always been built with unique identity, DNA if you may. Special something that experienced riders feel every time they take it on a ride. Based on the old 750Rs steel tubular backbone frame, Kawasaki has added a cast aluminium subframe section running down from each side of the engine and connected by a tube around the front. It reduces engine vibrations and increases rigidity. The double-sided steel box section swing arm is 12mm longer to maintain the same wheelbase with the bigger rear sprocket. 41mm KYB force and rear shock are adjustable for preload and rebound damping. The shock is moved 20mm to the left of the center to make way for the new exhaust. Twin front brake discs are bigger, up from 300mm to 310mm and are gripped by Nissan four piston calibers. Trust me, it was one of the best feelings when I was trying to ride this as they pack a wider amount of fun. Liquid cooled inline four cylinder motor is bored out to 806cc. Power is up from the Z750's 105bhp to 111bhp, and the overall gearing is shorter thanks to the two teeth bigger sprocket, up from 43 to 45. These two main changes are responsible for the Kawasaki's extra grunt out of the corners, and my oh my, the power all the way through the revs is so much intoxicating that every time you pull the throttle you feel like enjoying that intoxicating and amazing mid-range that you get. The revised intake and exhaust ports, longer intake ducts, help boost mid-range power. This time, there's a fully aluminium die-cast cylinder head with plated bores, which is one kg lighter than before. 10% lighter pistons, bigger oil jets, wider radius crankshaft journals, a redesigned oil pan, a new cam chain with smaller side weights, and the throttle bodies are up 2mm to 34mm. 
For the fuel conscious, Kawasaki includes an eco mode notification on the dash that comes on when you maintain an engine speed under 6000 rpm. A lot of changes inside the gearbox and clutch mechanism offer more durability and an easier action. The boost a lot of mid range, the exhaust header pipes are made as long as possible. They curve beautifully outwards before coming back underneath the engine and into a new stubby end can. The build quality is excellent and up there with the best. The previous Z750 was bomb proof and we expect this to be no different. The best part which I like about the Z800 is its tractability. From low end performance all the way to the blistering top end, the 231 kilos weight is the main reason why I wouldn't really prefer this over the Street Triple 76 by RS. Considering this bike came out in 2013 and quickly got discontinued in the late 2016 to 2017, being replaced by the Z900s. The majority of buyers who would want to buy this are the ones looking for one of the best value for money machines and purists who love the raw nature of the Z800 paired with just ABS and nothing else makes for one of the most nimblest and fiercest animals. Agreed, it's not as great looking as its elder brother. The Z1000, which looks exactly came from an alien spaceship. Consider this no less. The instrument cluster is very easily readable. It may be a hit or miss, but the quality of it, the sheer build quality of every bit is something to watch for. Especially when you see the detailing of this bike. The letter Z is imprinted even on the seats and as well the beautiful beautiful tail section of this which makes onlookers give a second glance every time they look back. The front end headlights are very menacing which go down and back further. One of the best part is just a whack of the throttle and up comes the front wheel. One of the finest feelings you could have on a bike. As far as I collectively remember riding the GSX 750 s the Ducati Monster 821, the Duke 790 and the Street Triple 765 RS. By far the punchiest motor would be the Street Triple 765 RS. Way up in the high end is one of the best feelings that you could find one of the most nimblest handling bikes and one of the lightest as well. The Duke 790 has one of the best low to mid range power with one of the best in class electronics package. The next would come the Ducati which has a lot of character built into it. The Suzuki's GSX 750 has a bunch in the mid range that everyone would love. But then where does the Z800 fall? Right in the middle of the price bracket when everyone would want just pure raw power and nothing else. They just want Kawasaki's refinement. Their amazing features, especially with the raw engine motor, is one of the best paired with the price. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, get set and now.